Good morning, everybody. It's Rita Smith, the number one food fairy. And I decided to accompany my short video on how to buy great steaks at a great price in the province of Ontario, uh, shopping the summer sales and stocking up your freezer, that I would um, toss in Montreal steak seasoning because uh, it's, uh, it's a wonderful concept. It's a delicious flavor. Everybody in my family likes it one variation to another um, and I like to actually season the steaks before I put them in the freezer. I'm almost out. Um, I think I made this last summer and um, as you can see I'm getting pretty close to the bottom of the jar. So given that steaks are on sale now and I like to season my steaks before I put them in the freezer, um, I'm going to run out well, today. So uh, I'm going to make a new batch of Montreal steak seasoning. I thought I would just walk you through how I do it um, and how you can do it and encourage you to experiment and try your own variations because your family's tastes may be different. Um, I searched uh, Montreal Steak Spice or Montreal Steak Seasoning about five years ago online and I found an online recipe that I amended to make my own and this morning I thought I would just check to see what's going on online. Are there, you know, more or less notations for Montreal steak seasoning? There are 11 million hits, 11 million different um, uh, options that you can look up for Montreal steak seasoning, which says to me that everybody likes their own combination. And the only way that you can find your own combination is to make some and then taste it and see if you like it, and if you don't like it, uh, adjust it. That's one of the great things about this process is if there's too much of something or not enough of something, you can adjust. It's a dry spice, dry herb recipe. There's no liquid. You wanna make sure that there's no liquid introduced to keep it dry. Um, so if it's too salty, you can add more herbs, and if it's too, uh, too much fennel, you can add more pepper. Um, you can adjust. That's, that's magical about Montreal steak seasoning. And I found a combination that works for everybody in our family. We don't so much like spicy, and I prefer less salt if I can manage it. Um, and so uh, uh, I've adjusted for my family's taste, as you will for yours. So let's come back in a second, and I'll actually explain to you what is here and how to mix it and then how to store it and how to gift it. It's a fantastic gift. Okay, so I'll just walk you through what is here. Um, I have my recipe that I found online and um, I adjusted many, many times before I got it precisely the way that I want it. Um, the recipe calls for coarse salt and you cannot use regular table salt. It must be coarse salt or the recipe will be so salty you can't even bear to eat it. Black pepper. You can use white if you have it. White is very expensive. I use black and I'll talk to you in a second about that. Dehydrated onion. Dehydrated onion, which is relatively easy to find if your store has a pretty good spice aisle. Um, as a chef in restaurants, we had like a pound jar of dehydrated onion on our uh, chopping blocks at all time. We used a lot of it and um, uh, uh, it, it's, it's kind of a, a, a little bit of a kitchen trick that a lot of people don't know about. Dehydrated onion is, also, is awesome. The recipe also calls for dehydrated garlic. Now, I find dehydrated garlic very difficult to locate. Uh, when I can find it in a store that I'm shopping at, it is prohibitively expensive. So I have um, amended this recipe to use a proper amount of, of just dried garlic, garlic powder, actually, as we call it. If I can find dehydrated, I buy it because it does affect the texture of the seasoned salt. Um, however, it's not that easy to find, not as easy as dehydrated onion. And then in the spices, we have um, thyme, rosemary and fennel. Fennel is kind of the secret ingredient. Thyme is really important too. Well, they're all. Rosemary, thyme, and fennel, all really important. If you ever have a Montreal steak seasoning without fennel, you'll notice it right away because fennel is one of the distinctive flavors in steak seasoning. And the original recipe that I read called for um, ground uh, red pepper. I, our family doesn't like things quite that spicy, or for those who do, they can always add pepper sauce. So I use paprika instead of um, hot red pepper. And then those who don't like hot can eat, can add hot or can eat it as it is 
and those who like hot can add some seasoning to it if they want to. This way everybody can enjoy it and, um, and amend it if they need to on their plates. So we've got coarse salt, black pepper, granulated onion, dehydrated granulated onion, garlic powder, thyme, rosemary, fennel, and paprika. So uh, I'm going to mix it together and there's just one small trick to that that you need to know about. So I will, uh, I will do that now and um, whew, then we'll get on to storing it. Okay, so I have pre-measured, as I showed to you, um, all the spices and uh, salts, herbs that are going to go into my Montreal steak seasoning. Um, so I'm going to start by putting in the coarse salt, which is an abrasive, by the way. So it, it could actually, you know, you could, there's cleaning tips that tell you to rub something with lemon juice or vinegar and coarse salt. That's because coarse salt is abrasive and that is actually important uh, to this formulation. I'm going to put in the dehydrated minced onion, a half of a cup. I put in a, a cup of coarse salt, a half of a cup of minced onion. Um, I've got two, let me just check, two teaspoons of paprika. Not that much, two teaspoons. Um, I have got a half of a cup of garlic powder. Uh, I don't know anybody that doesn't love garlic, so you can, whoo, you can hardly go wrong with lots of garlic. Um, the black pepper, which is, let me just see how much did I tell myself to put in. Uh, a quarter of a cup of black pepper or less, I noted on my page. And uh, I put in just a little bit less than a quarter of a cup. And what I want to tell you about pepper is um, it loses its flavor over time, as do all spices, as do all dried herbs. And so when I am using a recipe that calls for pepper in bulk, or anything in bulk, frankly, um, I empty my containers that have been sitting around the house for, I don't know, three months or four months since the last time I, I uh, um, filled this. Uh, so now it's empty and I'm going to wash it. And um, what will happen um, uh, go, moving forward is I'll put fresh pepper in my fresh uh, my pepper shakers for the table, uh, and it'll stay fresh and it'll stay flavorful as with all the other herbs and spices. If um, uh, making a recipe that calls for a lot of something, I try to use up whatever is open because as it's sitting there on the shelf, not getting used, it's losing flavor. So this way you can keep your spices rolling and keep them flesh, fresh and flavorful. Okay, so um, the last thing I'm gonna add is uh, my spices, my herbs, my dried herbs, two tablespoons of thyme. Okay, two tablespoons of thyme. Uh, two tablespoons of rosemary. That was a good buy, a buck for that much rosemary in Ottawa. And two teaspoons of fennel. The fennel is strong. You don't want it to overpower everything else, but you do need fennel. So that's my, my uh, dried herb mix, and that's going to go in. Now, going back to the, um, going back to the coarse salt being an abrasive, one of the things that is helpful in making Montreal steak seasoning is that once it's all mixed together, this is actually, it's actually a key part of the process. Um, I take it by the handful and smush it together like this, okay? I just let everything run through my hands and I grind it, almost grind it, uh, and allow the coarse salt to abrade the fennel, the rosemary, the thyme, we mix in the pepper. I'm not gonna get through this process without sneezing, I'm sure of that. But I do this for a short while. Um, you, can, you can do it for a longer period of time if you want to, but you kind of want everything to be more or less um, of the same texture and mixture. <coughs> Whoa, big lung full of garlic and pepper. Of the same texture and mixture um, when you're finished with the batch. So I'm gonna do this for a second. I'll come back when I'm done with that. Okay, we're back. I've spent several minutes kind of rubbing this to death um, between my hands, mixing the flavors, mixing the essential oils that would be found in the fennel and the rosemary. And uh, so now I'm gonna package it up. I just wanna uh, tell you one thing about the herbs that you use in this. Um, I grow rosemary and thyme, um, among other things, in my garden, and it's great to have those to use fresh, but you don't use fresh herbs 
in Montreal steak seasoning because they're not dry. Even if you home dry them, it's really hard to get them as dry as you need them to be. I buy them at a store. Um, and sometimes even store-bought isn't uh, as dry as it needs to be because if you put something in here that has more moisture than you wish that it would have, I eat herbs right from the garden, um, they will start to mold and wreck the flavor of your Montreal steak seasoning and they'll wreck the flavor of a very expensive steak. So don't do that. Make sure that every single thing that you put in this rub, in this mix, is as dry as it's humanly possible to make it and then it will keep um, for a good long time. You don't really have to worry too much about, um, about it keeping and that makes it ideal to store in your cupboard. It also makes it ideal for gifts and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so here in my house, um, we kind of go through this in volume in the summertime. And as I said, I tend to season my steaks with Worcestershire and Montreal steak seasoning before I put them in the freezer. So they're uh, becoming more flavorful as they're in the freezer, as they're thawing. And um, uh, then there's nothing to be done when I take them out to thaw them. Then I just throw them on the grill and they're quite perfect. So I like to season before I put things in the freezer. Whew. I'm going to sneeze over that. However, an other um, really great thing to do with your homemade Montreal steak seasoning is give it away as a gift. I honestly, the proportion of human happiness that comes from somebody leaving my house with a really silly little um, jar or, or Ziploc bag, Ziploc bag, it'll keep fine, no problem with a jar of Montreal steak seasoning or Fuego spice or any other spice rub that I have put together myself, um, it's, it's out of all proportion to the work and the money that went into making the rub, like making the seasoning mix. Um, and I, 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 if people really like what I, they're eating at my table, I say, here, take some of the seasoning home with you. And wow, it's crazy. It's crazy how much it means to them uh, to leave with a, uh, a jar of homemade spice mix. So once you've made yours and you are um, satisfied with the flavor, the texture, um, uh, uh, just, you know, it, it's making you happy, you like it, and you're proud to serve it to your guests, then you can um, package it as your own, you know? Rita's Montreal Steak Seasoning or somebody else's Montreal Steak Seasoning or um, I give this to my kids because I know they prefer this to store-bought. And store-bought, to be frank, is um, as, as awesome as it is, and God bless whoever invented Montreal steak seasoning, um, is really expensive. The tiniest jar for $6.99 or $7.99 for a, just a tiny, tiny jar of Montreal steak seasoning. I can put together that whole whack package for, you know, a couple of bucks. And uh, this will last me more, well, let's say a summer. It won't last me a year, but it'll last me a summer for sure. And um, I'm happy to make big giant batches and give some to friends. You could put it in a Ziploc with a ribbon or however you want to do it. But um, people, once you put your stamp of approval on a recipe and you know that your guests like it, they're, they're ecstatic to take some home with them and they can recreate your meal with your spices um, without having any other work to do. It's kind of fantastic, actually. And um, so there you have it, Montreal Steak Seasoning. Uh, use dry, dry, dry herbs. You don't want to get that gross, musty flavor mixed in with your spicing. That'll wreck the meat. Don't do it. Don't don't uh, uh, succumb to the temptation to use herbs from the garden unless you've really, really, really dried them. Um, rub it in your hands to mix things together with the coarse salt, which is abrasive, and it will help mix the flavors, and they'll continue to mix even as they sit here in the jar. Um, once you've got your recipe perfected, give some away as gifts. If you're on a budget or you're a student or you don't have um, a lot of money to spend on Christmas presents or birthday presents, homemade spices and rubs are always welcome. When my neighbors give them to me, I use them with enthusiasm to see what they're up to that I'm not. Um, so feel free to share. They make a fantastic, inexpensive gift made with love and uh, helps people enjoy meals away from you 
even though you're not there, you can kind of be with them in spirit. So be confident in the kitchen. Try lots of variations. Add more of what you like and less of what you don't and, um, and get your own Montreal steak seasoning mix going. I will post the uh, handwritten, I'll type up the recipe that I use uh, to put at the bottom of this video clip. But as I said, there's 11 million versions <laughs> of Montreal steak seasoning on the internet. So I'm sure you can find one which is close to what you are looking for. And then you will adjust it as you see fit for your family and your friends and uh, enjoy the summer, man. Get the steaks on sale, get the barbecue fired up, and have a good day. Be confident in the kitchen. Rita Smith, signing off.